Hello and welcome to web learning where knowledge is being shared. In today's video I'll show a quick tutorial how to use the timer in the STM32. As always I'm using the STM32L053. You can use this example with any of the STM32 devices. So let's start. So in this tutorial I'll show a quick how to set up the timer with the PWM, how to generate the code with the Cubemix and how to configure the timer to a PWM one of the LEDs on the board. If you don't know what PWM is it's best to stop this video and go to other videos that are online that explains exactly what is PWM, that is Pulse Width Modulation. In this STM32, the internal oscillator can run up to 32 MHz. Now, we can decide that one second is 32 MHz, so this is 32 million. So one second equals the oscillator that we're running, equals 32 megahertz equals 32 million. In the device, in the timer, there is a register called prescaler. The prescaler is a divider that we can put any value. In this example, I've decided this will be 32,000. Another register that we have is a counter period. I'm going to set it to 1,000 and that will be equal one second. And then we have a pulse of 500. So let's recap this really quickly to understand what are the registers and what did I do. So every second the oscillator oscillates at 32 megahertz, that's 32 million. This clock goes to a prescaler that divides the 32 million by 32,000. That means that the output of the prescaler will be 1,000. So every second we'll have 1,000 pulses because the 32 million is divided by 32,000. That means that we have 1,000 pulses for every second. Now, in order to get an exact one second, we can say that our counter period will be 1,000. In other situation, we can say that every second will be 500 pulses. Now, because we've decided that our counter period will be 1,000, we need to decide on when will the change will happen. This is this register that is called pulse. The pulse, I will set it to 500. So every 500 pulses, it will change. Now let's see how this works from the reference manual. In the reference manual, you can see how the timer is built. This is timer two. So first of all, we decide that we're using an internal clock to drive the trigger control. The trigger control will output the clock to this line into the prescaler. So the prescaler is not doing anything except for dividing the amount of pulses that we're getting from the trigger control. So putting 32,000 in the prescaler, what we'll get at the output is 1,000. This counter will run to 1,000 and we'll get auto reload to 1,000. And this counter is visible to the output capture compare of all these outputs. Any setting that you'll put here will get compared to the counter and will change Every time it will have a match. So setting the channel 1 to 500, every time the counter will reach 500, you will see a change on the output. In the Cubemix, the way to do this is start a new project, select timer clock source, internal clock. This is the clock that will drive the timer. And then select the channel 1 as PWM generator channel 1. We can do this also to the other channels. In the parameter setting of the timer, we'll put the prescaler, put the prescale to 32,000, we'll put the counter period to 1,000, and we'll put the pulse to 500. Now there is counter mode up or down, and there is into clock division, and the outer real period. All these things are disabled, and you don't need to change them. So how do we start the process of the timer? There is not much to do this. It's only peripheral initialization that goes that comes from the HAL and then we only need to run one command of HAL timer PWM start with the timer that we want and that's it. So the way it works is HAL timer PWM start we need to put which timer and which channel we want to start is HAL team PWM stop that does the same thing. So we're going to toggle the LED of LD2 the function that we're going to use is HAL team PWM start H team 2 and team channel one. So we're back in the Cubemix. If you haven't used this software before, I highly recommend to go and view the tutorial on how to use the Cubemix 
and then come back and continue. So quickly I'll set the demo board that I'm using. I don't have the oscillator of the 32 and the high speed, so I'm going to disable them. Here's the timer two, clock source, internal clock, channel one, PWM generation on channel one. Let's configure this. So our prescaler, this is how much we want to divide it before it goes to the timer, 32,000. Counter mode up or down. Our counter period, so for every one second, we're going to count 1000 clocks because this is 32 megahertz divided by 32. It means that we have 1000 clocks for every second. And I want to do a PWM for one second. So this is 1000 clocks. And every 500 clocks, I want to have a change. You can see that the timer one was set to PA0 and the LED is on PA5. Timer two can be also outputted to PA5. So timer two, channel one. And you can see it moved from PA0 to PA5 and the LED is connected to PA5. Next, clock configuration. Again, this is really important because the timer itself is getting the internal clock. This is the, how, this is the clock that's being generated to the timer. So 32 megahertz. If this will change, this also will change the timer itself. I'll give it a name, PWM. As always, I'm going to use a studio and I'll generate code. Open project. A quick recap on the code. User code begin to. HAL timer PWM start. HTTIM. We only need to do it once. And again, it depends on the code that you're going to do. HAL team PWM and team channel one. Let's compile debug. In order to view this, I'm using my USB oscilloscope and I click resume. And now we can see the pulse that we have. This is 500 millisecond. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll know when I'm uploading a new video. Thank you.